Good morning. I know I am very early this morning, but I have a correction to make. Um, thank you, Isaac, for letting me know. So, um, you know how I always talk about start, right? I say study to show thyself approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth, right? Well, it doesn't deal with the word of truth, but it does deal with something I said yesterday. I obviously had the incorrect snake when I was talking about being the charmer, right? Now, normally, if I have something that I write down, I'll go on the internet and confirm it or what have you. I did not do that with snakes because I cannot look at a snake, not in a book, not a stuffed one, not a rubber one, not snakeskin shoes at a store. Um, I see the actual snake. Um, and so I did not look on the internet to confirm that I was talking about the correct snake yesterday. So um, it is still Puthon, the Greek word for divination. Um, and a snake is a snake is a snake. But I did say the incorrect one. Um, Isaac, thank you. And again, I appreciate you all letting me know if there's something that I say that is incorrect, right? Um, but truly, that is the story of my life when it comes to snakes. Um, I remember being at um, this family's house and the dog was outside. And I'm like, okay, I'll go feed the dog, right? And I go out there and there's a snake out there and it's black with polka dots, right? I mean, if God asked me, I would tell him it was black with polka dots. And so I come back in and the guy goes outside and he's like, that snake ain't black with polka dots. That's what I saw. OK, um, I was in Camp Pendleton and one of my Marines and I, we went um, through the hills just to, to talk and um, get away from the office and all that. And on the way back, you know, we're on the road portion. And I see a snake. I'm talking about far off in the distance, right? And she's like, that ain't no snake. That's like a palm branch or something that's fallen. I'm like, no, that's a snake. And so she goes up closer because I'm heading the other way, right? It's going to take me like an hour and something to get back if I head the other way, but only like 10 minutes if we go the way we were going. And she was like, wait a minute, Connie, let me go look. And she was like, oh, it is a snake, right? And so when um, she ends up, she was like, I'll go ahead and I'll go before you, right? And so she's doing it to me, but I'm holding on literally to her cami blouse as we are going past where the snake was, right? And we get back and I'm telling this story and I'm talking about how orange it is like a, a orangish goldish color almost like a neon color and she's like that snake went at all that color that's what I saw and um one other thing or one other time I again I think I've told you all this I was in my garage and I saw a piece of material right and um i get ready to go pick it up it's like a handkerchief and it has the hound's tooth pattern on it and i get ready to go pick it up and i'm like not today um because i was married i'm like the husband whatever he put down there he can pick up and so when he comes home i ask him about it he's like what are you talking about and he goes in the garage and it's a snake right and so um i'm telling this story later on he was like Yo, if she would have seen the size of that snake, it was a handkerchief. So that's the story of my life. You can't ask me about to, um, distinguishing between different snakes because they are all camouflaged in some kind of way. And I truly believe that that's my protection um, mechanism from God because I would truly hurt myself, right? So um, again, Isaac, I appreciate you letting me know. Um, that I was supposedly talking about a co or I should have been talking about a cobra when I was talking about the charmer, but the word divination is the python. All right. So just wanted to, to clear that up. Let's go ahead and get started. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God. I thank you for how much you love us, Lord God, and how much you protect us, Lord God, even when we don't even realize it, Father. 
come to you on this morning, Lord God, just wanting to say thank you, just wanting to take a moment, Lord God, and say thank you for the things, Father, that we don't even think about. Again, the breaths that you give us throughout the night, Lord God, the activities of our limbs, Lord God, the creation of children, Lord God, such a miracle, Father, just how you keep things in order, Lord God. You tell the seas and the oceans, Lord God, when they can overflow, Lord God. Otherwise, they have boundaries that you tell them that they cannot pass father you keep the stars in the sky father you keep us perfectly aligned from the sun so that we don't freeze or burn up lord god so we just thank you for that on this morning lord I ask that you would be with us as we go throughout uh, more of your word, Father. Guide my tongue, Father. I pray, Lord God, that anything that I say, Lord God, is acceptable in your sight and hearing, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So um, yesterday when I was talking, I didn't mention, and so I'm just going to do it quickly, how much Lydia was like the Proverbs 31 woman. If you look at verse 14, verse 22, and verse 24 of Proverbs 31, you'll see some of the same um, characteristics in Lydia. Okay. So we are going to actually start with verse 18, even though we talked about some of that yesterday, we'll read 18 through 21 of Acts 16 and then get started. And this did she many days, but Paul being grieved turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. And when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrates saying, these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. All right. And so what was going on was Paul and Silas had gone down um, to the river where the uh, women were gathering and all that. And they knew that prayer was going to end up happening. And as they're going down to um, the prayer portion, they are met by this damsel who has a spirit. She's possessed with the spirit of divination. Right. And so. Um, for days, she's just following behind Paul and Silas and and just basically saying um, these men are the servants of the most high God was showing to us the way of salvation. Right. And it's wild how Satan, when he is in the presence of God, all he can speak is truth. Right. But yet we when we're in the presence of God, sometimes that's not even the case. So um, that that's interesting to me. But Paul was grieved and he turned to the spirit. OK, again, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. He turned to the spirit and commanded the spirit to come out in the name of Jesus Christ. And I was going to take you all to an account dealing with the seven sons of Sceva, where um, God shows you that you definitely have to be prayed up in, in his word in order to be able to um, do these types of things. But that's coming up in Acts chapter 19. So I'll just wait until we get there. All right. And so um, he's commanded the spirit to come out and the spirit came out the same hour. All right. And so now verse 19. And when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers. It's interesting. I heard a pastor say that some people like the dysfunctional you. And that's not always good. All right. These masters are ticked. They don't care that she's no longer possessed with the spirit of divination. They are ticked because their hope of gains is gone. Right. And so they take Paul and Silas and they're like, yo, 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 um, time for a trial. Right. And so they draw them into the marketplace, which kind of could be like a Times Square type thing is where people gather and it's for trials and just for different things. Right. You can um, have business and stuff there as well. And so they take them unto the rulers, verse 20, and brought them to the magistrates, saying, these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city. Now, Christians were the ones being persecuted, but they say because they're Jews, you know, and you got to ask yourself, like back in the day, was it kind of like what we're dealing with? You know, they talk about D um, 
DWB, yes, driving while black, you know, um, is there an issue that, you know, living while Jew, is that the reason that you're really bringing them before these magistrates and the magistrates, they were people who were allowed to administer justice for things that were not as, a, um, as serious of a crime. Okay. And so the masters are saying these Jews do exceedingly trouble our city. Now they're the only ones saying this, but supposedly the entire city is in an uproar. Verse 21, and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. To me, this is America, y'all. Um, you can teach everything in the world that is a, a, a religion except Christianity. You know, um, when I was in the military, we had to make sure that in the prisons, they were able to um, observe Wiccan and just all of this other stuff. But again, God forbid you put a Bible on your desk, you're offending someone. You know, you quote the Bible, you're offending someone. And so the um, Romans here were like, you know what? They're saying things that we can't even, you know, hear. We were not allowed to do and all of this stuff, right? And so verse 22 says, and the multitude rose up together against them. Again, they're like in a, in a um, Times Square type thing, right? Or a town square type thing. And so you've got all these people around, not just the magistrates. And so the multitude rose up together against them and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. I have questions here. Did they even ask Paul and Silas their side of the story? Did they automatically just believe these Romans because they were Romans? I mean, was there anything else that happened? Or are these just like strong, burly men and they're just ripping off their clothes, right? Like, are you kidding me? You know, it's blasphemy. Did they even get an opportunity to speak? If not, again, that's what we're dealing with in America, right? You're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty, but depending on who you are, that's not the case. Okay, so um, these magistrates, they tear off their clothes and they command them to be beat. Verse 23, and when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer, the, the jailer to keep them safely. All right, so they beat them and they put them in prison. You talk about throwing salt on a wound. If you're gonna beat me, then let me go, all right? You you proved your point, or just put me in prison. Why you gotta beat me if you're gonna lock me up, right? But they beat them, and they um, put them in prison, and they tell the jailer to keep them safely. Safely, they mean securely, because don't forget the Roman um, soldiers, they, they had trouble keeping uh, um, up with their prisoners, right? Uh, so verse 24, who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in stocks, all right? So he's like, all right, I need to take precaution because we've been losing too many of our prisoners. So he takes them into the jail and then into the jail that's inside the jail and not only leaves them there, but he binds their feet in stocks, all right? So you ain't going nowhere on my watch, supposedly, all right? Um. And then it says in verse 25, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. Sometimes the things that we go through are for somebody else. Sometimes people are going through the exact same things, whether they brought it on themselves or not. Sometimes they're going through the exact same things and they need to see how you go through it. All right. Paul and Silas had just been lied on, had been beat, freedoms taken away, thrown in jail. And at midnight, they're singing praises unto God. And I've got to ask you the same thing in your darkest hour, when all hope seems to be lost, when you're bound spiritually, when you feel like you've been beat up by the world, lied upon, all because you're in God's will. Don't forget it was God's vision that told them to go to Macedonia. All right. So they go there and all of this stuff happens. When you are in that place, what do you do? Do you remember the sovereignty of God? Do you praise his name or do you throw that pity party and hope that your friends join in? Okay. 
It's a, just a, a question for you. So at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and they sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. They say, okay, I see how this is going. They done been beat, wrongly accused and all that stuff, but they are still singing praises. Verse 26, and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loose. Suddenly, all right, I love how God stacks the deck against himself. All right, he's not just getting ready to free them from being in prison or just being in prison in stocks or just being in prison and in the inside prison. He's got three things going on, plus the guard, right? And so he brings this great earthquake that shakes the foundation. God will move heaven and earth to get to you, all right? Um, and so he brings this earthquake, the foundations shake, and immediately all the doors, all right? Every single door was opened and everybody's bands were loosed. That's that overflow blessing. Paul and Silas are the ones praying and singing and everybody around them gets blessed because of it, all right? And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. You on your job, you're supposed to be awake and you're sleeping. And when you wake up, all chaos is going on around you. Sometimes not doing what you're supposed to do can get you killed, all right? He knows that if you lose a prisoner, that's your life. So he is waking up. He didn't hear Paul and Silas singing. He dead and asleep, right? He's waking up and he's like, oh my gosh, all the doors are open. I know these prisoners are gone, right? And it had to be the power of God. Well, let, let's keep going before I say that. And so um, the keeper of the prison awakened out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had fled. Verse 28, but Paul cried with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm for we are all here. Either Paul had line of sight to the jailer or God gave him wisdom to let him know that he was getting ready to kill himself. And so Paul screams out loud and says, don't harm yourself for we are all here. And that is big of Paul because they plan on killing Paul and Silas. They had just beat Paul and Silas, but yet Paul cares enough for this soul, for this unsaved man to save his life, even though they were looking to take his. We'll go ahead and stop here. And whatever comment I was going to make, Lord willing, I will make it tomorrow. All right. So let's go ahead and stop. And again, um, Isaac, I appreciate the correction and anybody else. Y'all keep me on my toes, please. Please keep me on my toes. Heavenly Father, come to you, thanking you and praising you, God, for who you are. Thank you for being with us constantly, Lord God. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you for doing what we can't do, Lord God. But again, thank you for the ability to be able to do the things that we can, Lord God, that you've given us the, the knowledge, the wisdom, and the know-how to, to be able to execute, Lord God, even on our jobs, Father. Help us to be number one, Lord God, in the way that we treat people, Father, on, on our jobs. Help us, Lord God, to to have people see a difference, Father, and us to be able to tell them that it is the spirit of you within us that makes us different, Lord God. Just ask that you would be with our loved ones, Father. Protect us, Lord God, as we go throughout this day. And I ask that you would be with Eric, Lord God, with his job, Father. Help him, Lord God, to shine for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love y'all and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.